Hey there! I was contacted by... I have, I have trouble pronouncing it. Wan Chu. Um, I'm going to say Wan Chu. Because that's how I can pronounce it a bit more easily. Forgive me if it's not correct. Wan Chu. I, I also want to emphasize Wan Chu. Okay. I know you guys. Um, I was contacted by Wancher, and this is the web shop, the sort of the home brand of the person known as Engeika. And Engeika, you may know if you're into Japanese pens, he has very good deals on Japanese pens on eBay, but he also has his own line of products, which I did not know. So they asked me if I was going to review one of the products, and I said yes, because I thought it might be interesting for you all, uh, if you were like me and you did not know that there was such a thing as Wancher out there, um, you know, what, what this is all about. So they sent me one of their pens and one of their inks and I put the ink in the pen so you can see both at the same time. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. This is the pen, but here is the box. I'll show you the pen in more detail in a second. Box, simple cardboard, outer sleeve, uh, and then a simple functional box. Looks like that, all right? Has a little pen bed, a little thing you can put your pen in. Works well, very simple. This particular Wancher pen I kind of picked. It is in their Oshita series, and this is the Tsuru Rising Sun Crane pen with Makie. Okay, Makie, that um, I want to say Japanese painting technique that, that leads to very attractive pens. Now, when it comes to Makie, Makie is an art form uh, that is very precious and Marquier pens are very expensive. It is not at all uncommon to pay four figures for a Marquier pen. And these pens are $70. Uh, so I was in touch with Wancha and I said, is this, is this really a hand-painted Marquier pen? And they said yes. Now, there is such a thing as screened Marquier. Uh, where you pretty much put a basic pattern on a pen. I have the feeling, looking at this pen, and I could be wrong, that that is kind of what happens to this pen, and that it is then, the artwork is finished by hand. I'm willing to, to believe that. But just to put that out there. Quite simply, because if Marquier is this expensive, it's very difficult to offer Marquier at $70, right? You, you cannot buy a Rembrandt painting for seventy dollars, it's impossible. That doesn't mean this is not a nice pen. It also doesn't mean that it's not Marquier. In fact, I think what's very interesting about this pen is that you can get Marquier if you're interested, but you don't want to spend a whole lot of money. All right. And I think if you look at Platinum, they have a couple of Marquier pens which sound about two hundred forty bucks. So seventy dollars really isn't that bad. Okay. Having said that, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sample. Let's start at the very top of the pen. Nothing going on. I think this is a plastic model, plastic pen model, and here we have that marquee. So rising sun, we clearly have the sun right there, uh, and then we have these, whoops, sorry, here we have these crane birds flying. All right, so that's the artwork. Clip is an elephant, uh, has tusks and a trunk. Then we have this, the, the, as I said, the, the artwork, and then we have a center band. Artwork continues in the barrel, little black end cap there, and the cap pops off. Number six nib which is stamped Iridium Point Germany, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it's a pretty fine nib. Uh, don't forget that often when it comes to, to Japanese nib grades, they're, they're one grade below their Western counterparts, so a Japanese fine would be a Western extra fine. Uh, this is, I don't know if the nib is made in Japan, uh, because it just says Iridium Point Germany. I can't find a brand on it, but it is a fine nib, that's, that's for sure. It's also very rigid, 
uh, as you write with it. And because of that, it feels uh, quite feedbacky. I wouldn't say that it's horribly scratchy, but there's definitely some feedback. Section tapers down, has sort of a gold colored ring right there, uh, and then a, a plastic feed. This pen is fed with a cartridge by cartridge or converter, comes with a simple converter, works fine, and this is that Wancher uh, ink I put in there. As I said, pretty sure this is a plastic pen body with the artwork put on top of that, uh, and that makes for a very, very light pen. The whole pen together weighs 20 grams. At 50 grams, the pen feels really heavy in my experience, so it's, it's, it's very light. It feels very, very light. If you ever held an Amiki Falcon, it's kind of like that. The super light, uh, lightweight pen, which is nice for long writing sessions. Some people like a slightly heavier pen, but, you know, it feels light. Big section, comfortable to hold. Pen is a, I would say, very reasonable size. If you want to, you can post it. I'm not sure if you really should, given that the, you know, given the artwork, and you don't want to damage that. But in principle, you could. And then it makes for a slightly heavier pen, slightly heavier, but you know, the cap weighs seven grams, so it adds a little bit of weight at least. That's pretty much it. What do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? Well. It's definitely artwork. There is artwork on there, and I think that's that's nice. Uh, I, I like what's going on there, especially because at these prices, you can't expect the same quality of artwork, and I don't mean that in any offensive may, way, but you cannot expect the same artwork on a $70 pen as on a $7,000 pen. That's impossible. You cannot do that artistry at that level for that price. But I don't think it's bad artwork. It's definitely interesting, and if you're interested in Marquis, if you, if you want to try it out, you could definitely do worse than get one of these pens, because they only set you back 70 bucks, which I don't think is that horrible. Um, so, affordable Marquis is nice. Number 6 nib is nice, because those are easy to replace, and uh, you have a lot of um, replacement options if you don't like this particular nib. Um, it's a comfortable pen. It's very light, but it is comfortable. The section is, is shaped nicely. It's, it's pleasant to hold. Um, so I, I don't think any of that is, is horrible. What I will say is, because it is so light, it really feels super light, that makes it feel a little bit cheap, uh, just because of the, the low weight. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it, it, you, you, it doesn't feel very solid. Uh, if I hold this, this Sailor 1911, it feels more solid. But then again, that's pretty much a $300 pen versus a $70 pen, so you have to look at that too. Um, I don't really understand why the clip is an elephant. I, uh, I, I, uh, I, it's, it's, it's beyond me, but it's an elephant. It's a fun counterpart to the, the, the pelican clips that are kind of like a pelican. And so I've never seen this clip before, so that, that's interesting for sure. In all, I think it's interesting. What I will say is, what I have to say is that in some spots the finish is a little dodgy. And I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up, but I'm going to do my very best. Um, it's pretty dark, but if you look at right above my finger, you see there's a little black spot. So that artwork doesn't continue all the way into that end of the barrel. So right below that gold ring, there's a little bit of a black gap. And to be honest, the same thing uh, is the case on at the top of the pen. A little bit less pronounced, but you can definitely still see that. Uh, and it, it also definitely happened here, and maybe that's a better way to look at, at the cap. You see there is a little black line. Uh, this is all nitpicking, uh, because as I said, you, you, you are not buying a four-figure Marquis pen, you're buying something that's more affordable, less expensive, and this may be the consequence you buy something that is up to that standard. What I will say is, out of the box, the pen, I, inked, I cleaned it, I inked it up, it wrote straight away, there's no real issues with the nib. So it definitely writes, and it definitely writes well. Okay, that's it. Thank you to Wancher for sending me the pen, I appreciate it. I uh, will do a writing sample next, because I'm sure you want to know how it writes. High resolution pictures of the pen, as well as measurements, will be on the website, sbrebrown.com. I hope this was useful so far, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Wancher Oshita Makie 
the uh, rising sun and cranes. I'm not going to write all that down. The nib is a fine, and this is a Wencher ink, uh, which is a, a purple. It, it looked a bit like um, like Yamabudo, uh, Hiroshizuku Yamabudo. There is some feedback as you write. This is very smooth paper. So, on smooth paper you don't notice it that much. On slightly more textured paper, like copier paper, you do feel it a bit. Uh, the, the, the feedback, I mean, but it's not horrid. So there is some feedback, you see there is a little bit of skipping, it's not the world's wettest nib and it is definitely a, a pretty stiff nib. Um, wetness, it's pretty nice and, and wet and you can see there is some line variation to be had which is of course nice and pronounced because it is a fine nib to begin with. So if you really want to push it a bit you can and you do get some nice expressive writing out of that. You're starting out with a fine nib. This is a downright scratchy, the reverse writing, but you can go to an extra fine if you really have to. And that's all there's to it. So, Wancher, thank you for sending me this pen. I appreciate it. I hope this was useful. Uh, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.